Hi, all right, folks. Uh, welcome back to Gleska News. Right, this is a story by Gordon Blackstock. Apparently, he's a uh, he's a chief reporter with the Sunday Mail. Oh, big deal. Anyway, your story made it, Gordon. Right, okay. So we all know the story with dentists. Everybody's really angry and new with dentists and doctors. You can't get to see a doctor and you can't get to see a dentist. Well, I'm going to explain to you why. Right, I found out to my cost. Right, I've lost a front tooth because of all this. Right, and I'm in pain at the moment, and I'm on paracetamol and uh, ibuprofen because I've got dental pain at the moment. But let's go into this, right? It says here, angry dentists blast Nicola Sturgeon and warn COVID backlog could take years to clear. They've accused the Scottish government of failing to tell the public about the challenges they face uh, with routine appointments not being offered until 2022. And there's a picture. That's a Getty image, folks. I don't own that picture, right? We'll go back to that picture in a minute, but that's that's a Getty image. Some of the pictures the Gettys, isn't they? Anyway, it says here, dentists have warned it will take years to clear the COVID backlog with routine appointments not being offered until 2022. And they've accused the Scottish government of failing to tell the public about the challenges they face. It comes as patients complain about the long waits to see dentists for treatments like fillings, right? Fillings coming out, breaking, that's all pain-related stuff, right? The British Dental Association, or the BDA, has warned the ongoing access crisis has also seen staff abused. So people are phoning up the dentists, can't they get to see a patient, they can't understand. I'm going to tell you why in a minute, but they can't understand why they can't get to see a dentist because their teeth are absolutely killing them and they're shouting and bawling at the wee woman in the, in the reception. Stop doing that, folks, right? Because I'll explain to you in a minute why. David McCall, now apparently that's David there, all right, David. David McCall of the BDA said, the backlog is extensive and it's going to take years to sort out. We are hearing messages from the Scottish government that things are back to normal and that's just an illusion. And it is an illusion. We face the same challenges as GPs. Things just aren't anywhere near normal. Our First Minister should be going on TV and radio and saying things are not back to normal. Be more kind. All right. Okay. But she's not. And all we're getting is a lot of grief from patients who can't understand why they can't get an appointment next week. So he goes on to tell you about um, the fact that dentists are only treating about 40% of the amount of people they would normally treat. All right. So say they treated 10 people. They're only treating four. Well, why is that? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. Right. But I'm going to, first of all, give you my own <laughs> trauma, right? Unfortunately for me, when COVID first hit, just as the dentists shut down, I broke a front tooth. Now, you've got two front teeth and a, teeth, a tooth beside them. And I think that's called an incisor. I snapped it clean off right at the gum level. Extremely painful, right? And I immediately phoned the dentist, to, unfortunately. Even though I'd been doing stories on COVID, I get caught out. Just, you know, coincidentally, uh, my dentist was shut. My dentist actually left his personal phone number on his answering machine um, for his patients to get in touch with him. At the time, that was an extreme way to go, wasn't it? To put his own phone number, his own mobile number down. And I was the first person to phone him after his shop shut, after the surgery shut. And I explained to him and he told me he could do nothing for me. He tried to help me by telling me to get some cement and to try and plug it up, right? But he didn't know when he's going to be able to help me and that was the end of it. And so for over a year, that's what I did. Seven months, eight months later, I managed to, he opened up partially for emergency stuff. And uh, I managed to speak to them and they said, no, uh, I think you should go and see this private guy. I didn't understand why I had to go and see a private guy when you couldn't do it. But I thought it's because of the amount of people. So the private guy says to me, send me a picture. So I sent him a picture and he says, oh, that's a bad one. I'm going to have to do root canal work there. I'm going to have to uh, drill that, get a post in there. And I'll give you a temporary. I'll give you a temporary one um, until your dentist can get the right one in. Uh, that's £500. I think my response was, hey, do you know you used to be able to buy a motor, 
a car for five hundred pound. I was annoyed, right? Right, I wasn't going to give him five hundred pound. I thought it was a disgrace. So, subsequent to that, just in two thousand and twenty-one, there, I went to the dentist. My own dentist. He managed to see me. I went in thinking he's going to do that for me at last. I can get something done. Something can happen. And the first thing he said to me was, "Oh no, no." I says, he said, uh, "That root's too short. I'm not. That's not going to support a crown. I'm going to have to pull that tooth." Now I knew he wasn't telling me the truth. Or he was being academical with the truth, academic with the truth, or whatever it is you want to say. You know, there was something else that I wasn't aware of, but I suspected something. So although I was totally traumatised, and I had been running about for nearly a year with a mask on, my social life had ended as far as dating was concerned, because <laughs> I've got a missing tooth, and I'm paranoid about it. Um, he pulled the root out. He didn't say after that, I can maybe put a I arrange for a, a plate or something like God forbid, but that's unfortunately what I'd have to get a plate. I couldn't put a bridge in because I've got a bridge next to it. He went on to say, well, you've got a bridge there and you've got a bridge there. You'd be as well getting them all out um, and getting a whole new top deck. Uh, you're talking about £6,000. Phone this guy. The same guy that said he would do the tooth for 500 Yeah, I was just so traumatised. I was so disgusted with the dentist. I'll never go back to the guy for that. But subsequent to this, I've educated myself. All right. Now, this guy here, David McCall, mentioned something else that you'll be aware of. He mentions that not not only is it dentists are, take, are seeing less people, so are doctors. Why is that? Well, you know as well as I do how close you sit to your doctor, right? Even though you're wearing a mask and he's wearing a mask, if he sees fifty people, right? The chances of him catching COVID just sitting opposite you, right, uh, rise exponentially. <laughs> exponentially, what a word. Uh, with the amount of people that he sees. All right, and he's just sitting opposite you. But let's take a look at this picture. Get a closer look. Do you notice how close that dentist actually has to get to the patient? Despite the fact that he's wearing quite a sophisticated, I don't know if it's an N23 mask, I'm not quite sure, and they associate over here, they're all 3M masks, these are really expensive masks. Despite that equipment and that visor and all the protective equipment, when they're drilling, and you know as well as I do, when you're getting a filling done or you're getting some work done, tiny particles drop on your tongue and you're expecting this person to come in quickly and get them out. Sometimes you're like, going to hurry up. But they get the, they get the wee particles out, they suck them out, right? But unbeknownst to you, but known by the doc, the dentist and the associates, is that microscopic dust is flying about here. Have you ever drilled uh, a bit of concrete? Have you ever drilled anything in a wall? The dust goes everywhere, right? So despite the mask, you know, everything else, it can go in his eyes, it can go everywhere, right? It'll go in your eyes. Right, it'll go on this gown here, it'll go in that hat, it'll go in that stuff, that uh, surface there, and all his equipment. It's everywhere. So that's the reason then. You see, the NHS is not compensating doc uh, dentists to renew gowns, masks, visors, cleaning the place. They cannot possibly keep up with the amount of patients as well as cleaning the place down after every surgery. That's what it's all about, folks. Now, the private the private guy is kind of supplementing that because he's charging you far too much, right? They always do. That's why they've all got Porsches. But they're charging extra money because that's compensating because of all the cleaning that's going on. You know as well as I do that all these drills and all these probes have to be thoroughly sterilised. See if they're not thoroughly sterilised. It's going to cause epidemics. Right? So the pressure's on them, not just for their, their own safety, but for patient safety. Right? And although I'll never go back to my dentist and I'm looking for another dentist and I need help, <laughs> um, you know, I understand. And I'm trying to tell you what's going on. Look how close the dentist is to you. 
So he's vulnerable. And so is he or she. And so are you. When you walk in to the dentist after someone else has been in there. And that's what it's all about. It's the same with your doctor. So although there's a lot of poor responses, and I've, I've had poor responses for you, my son's doctor, terrible doctor for the East End, um, terrible surgery over in the, the Bailiston area, absolute disgrace, the doctor over there. The problem is, I think in terms of doctors, is they're losing that connection to their patients. They're dealing with people on the phone, right? So there's a lot of anger for doctors as well. But try, you know, try and uh, hold back on the shouting and bawling at receptionists and all the staff because they don't deserve it. And uh, I hope I've gave you a wee bit of an insight into what dentists are suffering the new. And I know you are suffering out there, as I am, as I say, I'm on paracetamol and ibuprofen now. You know, so we're all in the same boat here. And I don't know how we're going to get out of it. I just don't. But. As I say, I still wear a mask everywhere because I've got a front tooth missing. <laughs> anyway, folks, if you like the content, hit the like button, share and subscribe because that's what I've got to say about that. Peace out. How dare you!